What is going on everyone? My name is Carlos and hopefully I don't get run over but I just wanted to show you these new Electrify America chargers that look very beautiful. Um, I mean that kind of, that's a big space. Do you think that's probably for like the bigger trucks or like towing? Probably not towing but probably for like handicap maybe? But then we have like the normal chargers here that are like space normally. Um, but yeah, this is a new Electrify America charging station in Raleigh. It's been like this for at least a few months. It's looked like this for a few months. So I have no idea when they're going to actually open it, but it looks done. Um, it looks really cool seeing it like before. Um, but yeah, but this is not exactly what we wanted to talk about. We're gonna get into that in just a moment here. Actually, before we start, um, I do wanna say I know there is a new OTA update uh, for the Ionic 5s. I have not received mine. I'm still waiting. I'm just like, come on, do something. <laughs> and they are not available on the website. Usually they're available on the website, so I usually just download it on a USB stick and stick it in. That's what she said. Um, but they haven't been available on the website, nor have I gotten it over the air yet. Um, these, as far as I know, Hyundai just does it randomly, so I'm just waiting for my turn, I guess. <laughs> um, but two things I just want to speak on that point real quick. Number one, um, I feel like it's kind of our fault for hyping up a, a, a map update. Like, everybody's, like, disappointed. Everybody's like, oh, my gosh, just, like, a little update. And it's like, well, Hyundai never said it was going to be a big update. Like, Hyundai just delayed it a bunch of times because I'm sure... It takes a lot of time to, you know, make it properly or maybe they're doing something else. I don't know. But we hyped ourselves up and then we got disappointed when they just did like a normal update. <laughs> and um, on top of that, I don't know why YouTubers and like other people don't realize that whenever we get a big update, for example, the preconditioning or for example, the headlights when you break uh, the regen breaking headlight or backlight thing, um, we had to go to a actual dealership to get those updates like those big adding a ton of features and like something more significant. We have to go to the dealership. So I don't know why people are like, oh, this update was supposed to have X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, it wasn't to be. Yeah, sometimes there's like UI or UX changes, uh, but there's they're minor, right? They're like just small things that look different and that's it. Um, those big changes like preconditioning um, and the brake lights, we actually have to go to the dealership for it because the, these cars don't do actual updates over the air. Um, so just kind of rem remind yourself of that. <laughs> now, uh, we'll get into like the future cars and everything like that uh, momentarily, but uh, I just wanted to remind people, breathe. <laughs> um, I know we are eager for more things and features and uh, Tesla charging and everything like that, but as they announced before, the Tesla charging is going to be either the fall of this year or the beginning of next year. So just be patient, please. <laughs> I'm eager too. I really want to make videos about it. I really hope we get, you know, new features. I really want to test out how fast the Tesla charging is. Um, I'm, I'm very eager as well. I'm excited, but I think we really need to kind of just kind of tone it down and just be like, all right, let Hyundai cook and let's see what they're cooking. So a few weeks ago, I went to an EV go and it was perfect. All I did was plug it in and that's it. I didn't have to look at my phone. I didn't have to look at the car. I didn't have to do anything else. I just plugged it in, went to the grocery store, walked around, came back, unplugged it, and that's it. Beautiful. This, this is what Tesla has been doing for centuries, right? <laughs> um, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. I don't live near any EV goes. The closest like fast charging station near me is in Electrify America. And my experience with them has been pretty positive for the most part. I know back in the day, like just a few years ago, um, everybody hated Electrify America because they're unreliable, they keep breaking, blah, blah, blah. Um, I feel like nowadays, most of them are pretty reliable, pretty okay. They're not all perfect. Some of them are still broken. You know, some of them break easily. And some of them are still the older version. The ones you see behind me, the ones that we just looked at, those are the newer versions um, that are more reliable software and hardware wise. Um, but the feedback part is how crazy, well, first, you know, the pay, the plug and pay that EVGO does 
Electrify America doesn't have that for Ionic 5s and Hyundai's specifically, um, and I'm sure other manufacturers, but for Volkswagen, they have plug-in, uh, plug-in pay, I believe. From my understanding, Volks, most Volkswagen EVs can just plug it in and that's all they have to do. Um, so that's number one. But number two is the payment process. We are in 2024. We're about to reach 2025. And Electrify America thinks it's brilliant, brilliant that <laughs> they can do the whole like put a charge card thing. Like if you use the app, they'll charge you $10 anytime you're at $5 or below. They'll charge you $10. So even if you charge for $10 exactly like let's say $10 and five cents or something. They're gonna charge you another $10 So essentially you're spending $20 to pay for $10 of gas or electricity, right? Um, and that goes it's it's crazy because sometimes you can be like I'm just gonna spend $15 But then you end up spending 20 and it's just like you're spending more than what you need because that's how it works on the app on top of that, if you decide to use your credit card and just, you know, swipe it, uh, two things. Number one, you don't get any benefits if you're a member. You can't just swipe it. You actually have to use the app. You have to pay the app. You have to do everything on the app. Um, or you can use the wallet card uh, for the membership, but it's still going to, you know, go to the app and take out $10 every time, which is so dumb. Uh, the second thing is if you use uh, the credit card reader, um, they will hold and charge you $50 and hold it for a week or more. Sometimes it was like a couple days, like after a week. Um, but yeah, $50. But on top of those, on top of the $50 they hold, they also charge you for whatever you use. So let's say I use like $30 worth of electricity. They'll charge me $50 for the hold and then an additional $30. So it's like, what? <laughs> so essentially you're spending like $80 that one time of course you get the money back the fifty dollars back but you have to wait like a week so like if you're struggling like if you're like oh i just need a little bit of juice you're kind of out of luck and it, that's it's crazy to me crazy to me because charge point and ev go charge you for however much you use however much electricity you use electrify america as far as i know is the only ones that will keep constantly charging you ten dollars if you use the app or do a $50 hold for a whole week, not even just like, you know, a few minutes, a whole week. They need to focus on the consumer end of things, right? What's best for the consumer? Um, all of us, we're using these chargers, right? Um, why not think about their experience? It will make so much sense if it was just plug and pay and you just pay for what you use. Common sense. But unfortunately, um, we're not there yet with Electrify America, but EVgo and ChargePoint, 10 out of 10. All right, I'm actually about to head to work, but I did also want to talk about the new Ionic 5s and um, just kind of my opinions and just kind of some information that I've gathered uh, from the Hyundai website. Uh, so number one, and I'm sure everybody knows, it has a charging port or Tesla charging port. Ooh, everybody's excited. Um, there's a few concerns. I mean, I'm excited too. I'm happy that they're moving on. They're actually the first one out of all the manufacturers to move on to the Tesla charging port, from my understanding. And um, that's exciting. That's really awesome. It means they have a good relationship with Tesla because obviously they would not do this if they weren't communicating with Tesla. Now, my two concerns are number one, uh, Vehicle to load. I think that's one of the biggest selling features, at least for me. I know maybe it's a niche thing, but I love vehicle to load. I think it's just such a useless, not, not useless, uh, useful uh, feature. And I don't know how that's going to work with the Tesla port. Um, I don't know if you're going to have to have like an adapter. But yeah, I don't know if you need like a, a Tesla adapter to the J port and then from the J port use an adapter for vehicle to load, which would be insane or if they've somehow partnered up with Tesla and created a vehicle to load with the Tesla uh, NACS uh, port. Um, because that would be insane too if they work together to create one because then they're probably gonna also sell it to Teslas as well. So I'm very curious on what they say about that. Um, the second thing, it would be the charging. So as of now, if you charge anything other than a Tesla, um, you need to be at a version two or version three uh, Tesla charging station from my understanding version one and two does not work with any of the manufacturers besides tesla themselves um so now that we have a charging port 
does it work with the version ones and twos or is it only gonna work with version three and four? Um, that's my biggest question. Another thing that they announced as well is the XRT variant. Um, I think it looks awesome. I really love the design. Um, however, I mean, and this is, I guess, feedback for Hyundai. Uh, from my understanding, all the ones that they showed were not finalized. So like that, the height of like how much it's lifted is not finalized. Um, the software is not finalized. So, so they kind of show like a concept car, if anything. And, um, all they had was the plastic cladding in the front and the back and the tow hooks and then really thick tires. There goes my phone. Um, which looks awesome. 10 out of 10. I have been dying for like an Ionic 5 that's like all terrain, like really rough looking. Um, that is like my dream car if they can do that. However, I'm a little disappointed because they haven't shown anything specifically besides the design. And I'm just like, well, what other features make it like XRT, right? Like, does it do the crab walk where you can like maybe, you know, go side to side? Um, does it lift up and down like um, active suspension? Like, there's a lot of questions. Maybe I'm hoping too much. Maybe this is just going to be like a version one, see how it goes. And then version three and four are going to be better. Um, but yeah, I'm just a little disappointed because the XRT looks awesome. But that's all it is. It just looks awesome. There's no like, they haven't shown it off in the desert or something, you know, something crazy. Um, so I, I want to know more. I have very high expectations. Um, but you know, at the same time, this is the first time doing Ionic 5 XRT. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is just going to be a basic version and then later on they're going to improve it over time. And, um, yeah, I'm still excited for it. We'll see where it goes. Last two things I wanted to uh, talk about real quick. Number one. Um, the CNCC software that all the new Hyundais are using that can do all the over the air updates so you never have to bring it into the dealership and they can do like significant updates to the car. Um, that is, some people are saying that's phasing out. I don't think that's the case. I think they're still going to have that software built into the cars, but they are moving on to Google software. So we are going to have like a giant tablet like Tesla's and Ford's have and Rivian's. So we're going to have a giant, we're going to have a giant tablet right here. Um, and they showed this in like some kind of presentation for the, the stock, the shareholders or whatever. Um, I think that was for that, but yeah, so they're going to have a giant tablet and they're going to be using Google software. Um, I think that's awesome. I also feel like internally they're going to have CNCC built in the background for the car, more or less for the car specifically. Um, so I feel like they're just combining both. That's just my assumption. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, they're going to like get rid of CNCC like right away. I don't think that's the case at all. I think they're keeping it, but they're just going to put it like more internally inside the car. So that way it updates, um, you know, works with Google, Google software. But anyways, that's kind of like my opinion. So I, I say don't panic. If anything, the Gen 5 people like me, um, we're going to be missing out on a lot of <laughs> cool updates in the future, probably like in the next uh, three years, uh, we're probably going to miss out on a lot of cool features, but that's okay. That, that brings me to my last point that I want to just mention in this video. I'm going to be late for work. Oh my God. Uh, but the last point I just want to mention is enjoy, enjoy your cars. Um, I feel like a lot of people are like, uh, you know, I want CNCC or, uh, I want, you know, the slightly bigger battery that's only going to add like 30 or 40 more miles. Um, like they want more and more and more, but you know, what we have now, what I'm driving, I'm literally driving a smart battery basically that looks sexy as hell in the outside. I really love the Ionic 5 design. There's no other car like it. Um, and I love how roomy it is. I'm a big guy. I'm six, I'm, I'm over six foot. I'm over, you know, 250 pounds. Like I'm a big guy and I have literally so much space. Like I love this car. I really, really do. Um, are the new versions better? Sure. I mean, it's technology though. Like the computers update like every few months. Um, like phones update every year. Like technology always advances every like really fast. Technology always advances really fast. It's always updating. You're always gonna have new features. Enjoy what we have and then save up for the future, right? Um, I plan in, in five years, I plan on upgrading this car to whatever XRT version they have because I really want a rugged EV. Or who knows, maybe I move on to Rivian and kind of just, I, I don't know the future. I don't know how much I'll be making or anything like that. Maybe I'll keep this car forever. I don't know. but. 
What I do know is that I love this car, I'm enjoying this car, and I think you should enjoy what you have and love what you have. If you wanna make cool things like, you know, add little, you know, things like this is like carbon fiber, or the vents are carbon fiber, or I, or I blacked out the emblems, like, make it your own, like, make it exciting. Um, just enjoy what you have, right? I think that's something that people are forgetting. Uh, with all that said, I have to go to work. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm actually going camping this Saturday, so next week will be a camping video car camping um so one of you guys were asking about that so i will show you the whole setup and everything like that uh but yeah take care like subscribe leave a comment on what you think about the whole charging situation and the new ionic fives and everything like that and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace